Where are the cultural roots situated? The debates have gone on endlessly, dictated by nationalistic trends. Each side would keep referring to the history of their own respective ethnic group. But if we consider the issue from a perspective of neutrality, these cultural roots might not have been placed in any specific location. Rather, the networks of roots spread across the lands where situations developed. Over long periods, neighboring ethnic groups became interconnected into one and the same civilization. Conflict would arise from many different factors, ranging from politics to governance to the division of the land as a result of Western colonial rule. The concept of national pride tends to use the method of mental conditioning the mindsets of people who belong to the same ethnic group. They are conditioned into holding on to the pride in their own cultural roots, even though these very roots originated from the same source. Regardless of just how spread out, they are roots that can never be separated from one another. for life. Khmer is an ethnic group in Southeast Asia, inhabiting zones surrounded by influences from Siam and Vietnam. Warfare, the building of extended clan relationships, and migration to new settlements altogether contributed to the movement of entire households over the course of many historical eras. Then came the era of the French protectorate, in which incorporation into Indochina had been the intended process. A dream was promoted of turning Cambodia into the Singapore of Indochina. The people of Cambodia were conditioned with awareness of the power and grandness of the civilization of their past. Angkor Wat was believed to be the master monument built by the ancient Khmer ancestors. These ideas resulted in the country's nationalism. Battles for independence were fought by the people of Cambodia over different periods. They had always been pushed into choosing which side to take between the Siamese, the Vietnamese, and the French, whose influences encircled the immediate region. Siem Reap, an important city of northwestern Cambodia, became the subject of dispute during French Indochina. After the Second World War came to an end, Siem Reap was returned to the French protectorate and new borders were drawn. These borders still appear in current maps of nation states. Apart from Angkor Wat, which is a World Heritage Site, the surviving heritage of Siem Reap includes the French colonial architecture that once served as offices and residence of French courtiers. This style of architecture can be found in many places throughout the region of Indochina. Land and water routes had once served as primary means of transportation. Those routes have now been adapted for trade and tourism purposes while bringing in floods of people. In any given year, the number of people traveling here amounts to more than the entire population of the province of Siam Reap itself. Those who were born after the Civil War learned about the conflict between fellow country people through historical accounts and stories they heard from older generations. The importance given to education will lead to the country's development and the nurturing of new values for future generations of Cambodians. But it appears that the remains of a long-standing poverty can still be observed in Cambodian society. The youth of this day and age have more opportunities in education, but the security of their families 
continues to be an important contributing factor in the way these young people are conditioned. Many among the youth population are orphans who have suffered obstacles due to severe economic pressures. <coughs> ហើយយើងត្រូវជួយកិច្ចការផ្ទះបងបើយើងពេលខ្លះគិតមកតាន់ធំហោបទៅនៅនៅរៀនរងឯងខ្ញុំបានសម្ដែងបានតិចតួចបានទុកថវិកាខ្លះរៀនសូត្រពេលតែធំឡើង
It's also a platform for these young people to build new lives into the future. Gling Sam Nang, who is an older student, has become a leader at Ross Saray School. He teaches the younger students in place of their late master teacher. During the early stages, following the school's founding, becoming a student involved the ceremony of paying respect to the teacher. But later on, there was a reduction in the number of students. So the teacher decided to take in any student who came from an underprivileged background. <laughs> ចំនួនកញ្ញាមហាត់ហ្នឹងសោះចូលសាមសម្នាក់ជាងទៅសាយសម្នាក់បាទសោះធំធំសោះខ្លះគាត់តែមកដល់ឥឡូវហ្ន
ikut. Another highlight of Bokeda is the glama, which is a traditional garment used by fighters to wrap around the waist, head, and fist. The glama is charmed with spells and enchantments, and it's believed that the piece of cloth itself embodies the spirits of the masters. A rope is also tied around the waist. In the old days, a hole was dug in the ground to serve as the fighting ring. In the unarmed spectrum, the Boca doll has 341 sets of moves based on different types of animal styles. In this day and age, Boca doll has become a martial art with the focus on dance movements while using bare hands and weapons in combination with music. Today, Bang Shea Jock, head of the band of Sralai Wind Instruments, is here to perform with the other band members. The music begins with the ceremony to pay respect to the teacher. The pace transitions from slow to fast so that the moves of the pair of fighters become more intense and passion-driven. <laughs> Dit Sarayan is a 14-year-old Boca Dao fighter who only arrived to train at the school after Ross Saray passed away. She became the leading star of the school due to her energetic and playful personality, much like a boy. ដោយសារតាឈុះគ្នារឿងលេងបាល់អាមួយលេងតត់យាងបាល់ស្មើគ្នាអញ្ចឹងទៅវៃគ្នាលេងអត់ផងពួកអីក្រុមពួកគាត
to watch Kung Khmer. Younger and older children fight intensely while on stage. But once they leave the stage, they are friends training in the camp who must look after each other so that this Kung Khmer camp can survive successfully. Regardless of where these young people end up competing, they will always transfer part of their income to their teacher to help with the expenses of running the camp. The winning prize amounts to less than 10,000 baht, but it's awards like these that keep encouraging these Kun Khmer boxers to progress to the status of professional boxers. <laughs> ហើយតើក៏ថាអ្វីដែលយើងយកពីគាត់មកហ្នឹងយើងធ្វើមហោបាយ <coughs> <coughs> ជាត្រីសណលជាប្រពៃនីវកត់ប្រកួតគាត់ប្រើជាកូងច្រើនឹងឡាំច្រើនអញ្ចឹងហ្នឹងបងហើយនឹងតតអីយើងទៅហើយ
กรมตรมันจะแต่ปลุกเราเพลางไว้ยังออกไงยังเธอปลอมเกยยังไงก็เมาแต่ก็มาเรียนจุดนั้นก็มาเมาแต่ยังเธอบอกชอบไอ้พวกกอดสดับจุดนั้นยังตรึงเจอเธอไปเรียนในสถานที่ในไอ้เชียงใหม่ปีปีคนใหม่คนใหม่ให้ช่วยใช้ยมปลาคนใหม่คนใหม่โบราณได้วิสุทธิ์ตัวนึงบุกเท้าเรียกฮะบุกเท้านะว่าคือคนใหม่โบราณคนใหม่สมัยยังเตอร์บาร์ตัวพวกยมเออย่าเตะเชียร์เตะตะครูจมรู้เชียร์คนใหม่ในไงในพนมเป่งตั้งที่บุกซิงได้ The invention of martial arts came from the human instinct to protect oneself to stay safe and to fight off danger when combined with dance movements Aspects of the art form become rites of blessing and encouragement that are unique to the locality in which these developments took place. So similarities in form and technique between the presentations of long-standing neighboring ethnic groups should come as no surprise at all. The revival of Boca Doll and Kun Khmer in nation building has generated significant heritage value that had once disappeared with the conditions of history. All the while, it's very important to develop that heritage into professional security and sources of income. This collective pride has resulted from layers of branching cultural roots that have long been interconnected and strengthened here in this region of Southeast Asia.